Let's talk about the one-time pad. This is really important. This is the perfect cryptographic system. It was invented long ago, and it is very simple, and in principle, it is completely unbreakable. And it works like this. You have to have a, a pad of key, a lot of keys, like pages and pages of keys. And you use the keys to encrypt your characters one at a time, and you never reuse any part of the key again at all. So you have two identical copies of like a book full of random letters at each end, and you take the one letter of key and encode one letter of message using any system you like, like XOR or the Caesar cipher, but you never reuse any part of the key, and the key is random. So there is just no pattern in the encrypted text at all. There's no mathematical way to ever deduce the plain text from the cipher text. The only possible way to break it is to somehow steal a copy of that pad. So that's a fine system. The problem is, in practice, there was a mistake made in World War II. Russia was using the one-time pad, and they didn't have enough one-time pads. So to make more of them, they put more carbon paper in the machine and made many duplicate copies of the same one-time pad and used it for more than one message. And if you use the same one-time pad for two different messages, it destroys the system. It shatters like glass and suddenly becomes extremely weak. So first let's make a one-time pad. I'm going to use, instead of using random letters, I'm going to use a sentence as the key string, which is also a weakness, but it, it's good enough for what we're doing here just to see how it works. So here's my key string, unbreakable, awesome, secure, secret system. And then I'm going to encrypt a message. Notice that the message is shorter than the key string. It has to be because you don't repeat the key string. You have to have more key than all the message you're going to use. So here's the code. And let's make that in Python. So nano one time pad one dot pi. All right. So this is going to define the key and the plain text. And now I, for every character in the plain text, I'm going to turn that character into an ASCII number with the ORD function, find the key byte that matches it and turn that into an ORD function and then I'm going to use XOR to combine them and turn it back into a character. So I'll scramble the characters one by one based on the key. And let's see how that looks. Um, all right. Python 3 OTP. All right. And so here are the characters for score. This is the uh, message. Four score and seven is the message. This is the key, unbreakable. So it takes this, turns it into hex, takes that and turns it into hex, and it XORs it. So the result is no longer a printable ASCII character. It's ASCII 13, ASCII 1. These are non-printable characters, quite a few of them. So you can't print the message but you can express it as just a string of hexadecimal, which is what I've got here, 13, 0, 1, 17, 0, 0. That's what this is. So that mess is the encrypted message. All right. Now, if you want to decrypt it, I can just do it a second time um, with XOR, but now the ciphertext has to be here. And since the ciphertext is not um, readable string, I have to use the bytes from hex function to turn it back into um, readable, back into individual bytes that I can then decrypt. So let me put this up here. I'm going to call that OTP2. All right, so this is the ciphertext, and now I'm going to you do the same operation. Every byte here is going to XOR with a byte from the key, and that should undo the encryption. Control X, Y, Enter, Python 3. And so it does, 4 score and 7. OK, so now I know I can encrypt and decrypt with a one-time pad. So now I give you a key, and you have to decrypt this knowing the key. So that should be pretty easy using the same method. 
And here is the crib drag attack. This is extremely powerful, and you can even do it by hand without a computer to some extent, although it's of course easier to do it with Python. So if the key starts with the word the, and both of these ciphertexts are encrypted with the same key, then you know the first, this is encrypted with the letter T, and this with the letter H, and this with the letter E. So if you modify the previous program to handle two inputs, you can decrypt both of them, and here's what you get. What I did was I filled in all the missing bytes of the key with the periods, and so you see the first three letters of the key are known, and therefore the first three letters of the messages are known. So this one starts with NEV, and this one starts with YOU. So the crib drag attack works like this. You guess a word somewhere in either one of the messages or in the key. And then, assuming you know that, you decrypt the rest, and you find where you're right somewhere. You just guess a common word and try it in various places until these characters underneath are readable. And now you guess another character. This might be U space, or it might be U R. This might be starting of the word never. Looks like it probably is. So now you guess another couple letters. You guess that the next two letters here are E R. And then you calculate these and see if it's readable. And if it is, then you find any of these three lines. You guess another couple letters and fill it in. And you'll find that you're able to step forward one or two characters at a time, and it doesn't take long at all to get the whole thing. That's called the crib drag attack, and it is extremely powerful. And here, you're able to do it. You'll be able to resolve these without knowing anything about the key. And again, here's another one. Um, so it is surprising how powerful this is. And all I did to make it work was I wrote a little Python program that would let me do this interactively. It would print these three out and then say, OK, make a guess. I tell it which one of the three I'm guessing, give it the letter. It would then print them out again. And I could just uh, try guesses until I find something good. And then I had a way to just feed it back in. I wrote a sort of little game that would let me guess them interactively, uh, just with a couple of loops. You'll find out it doesn't take very much Python to do that. And that's, that was really important in World War II. So I'll stop this one.